I'm at my uh, mother and father law's house. We just got married yesterday, so uh, we came over to get some of our stuff. Hey, congratulations. I had no idea. That's crazy. Thank you. Thank you. So, where did you do the wedding? What was it? Uh, what was it like? It was awesome. Uh, it turned out perfect. The uh, we did it in Kent, Ohio, and um, it was right on a lake. Had like a beautiful patio. I think they're called a pergola or something. We got married there, and then the the uh, reception was right above that in this like uh, this like hall. And it was really it was really nice. We had a lot of people there. We had like not a whole lot. It wasn't a huge wedding. It was like a hundred people, but it was like it was just beautiful. Big enough, man. Uh, so is yeah. Vancouver is Vancouver the honeymoon plan? Like, no, that's what I keep joking with her about. Like, hey, we get to go to Vancouver. That's our honeymoon. She's like, oh yeah, real fun. <laughs> uh, do you have do you have one uh, planned maybe later? Uh, I want to take her some. You know, I like I like sandy beaches and, and and hot weather. So hopefully after this fight, if everything goes well, you know, we're gonna go and I don't know. I like I love the I love like the keys and all that. All right. Well, there's there's motivation for the performance bonus right there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's always motivation for that, though. <laughs> True enough. That is absolutely awesome, though. Uh, so congratulations again. Um, so I wanted to, to step back uh, a little bit to start this out. You came in, obviously, against Marie Green in your last fight. Maybe a lot of people didn't know you. I know a lot was made about, uh, you know, you had been doing the shingling job, and uh, then you, you moved to full-time fighting after the Contender Series. How has that transition been? How has training changed for you? Oh, it's just great, you know. Uh, I, you know, if you've ever done shingles or know any, you know, any manual labor like that, you know it's it's hard and it's hot and miserable. And the last thing you want to do after a hard day, ten hour day, is go and roll around on a mat with other hot sweaty men, you know. So, uh, but you know, it, it, my dream to make to the UFC and to win fights in the UFC, you know, surpassed my my laziness. So I. I still did it, but uh, now that I don't have to do that, it's it's great. I almost have too much free time sometimes. So, uh, I don't know. I think my training has I've stepped it up because I'm not as tired, for one, and just motivated. I'm real motivated. Now, I've, I've shingled as much as a shed, um, but I, I know it's tough on the body. Have you noticed the body reacting better in training now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the older I get, the the harder it is for stuff to heal. Like, I remember when I was, like, 22 and I'd hurt myself in practice or whatever, and, like, the next day I was fine. Now it's, like, a week later. I'm still whining about it. Uh, but the fact that I don't have to do uh, – carrying shingles is real hard on your elbows, and so is throwing a 1,000 jabs or whatever. So the, not having to carry shingles, like, I don't have elbow pain anymore or shoulder pain, so it's really good. It, it's – uh. You know, who wants to lift heavy shingles all day? Not me. Fair enough. Uh, I, I think a few people would probably say I don't want to get punched in the face either, but I definitely know uh, which is more appealing in the long run. Right, right. So you're training out with Strong Style, and obviously uh, you've got some, some famous teammates there. I mean, what has that been like? Um, You know, it was funny. Uh, at first, you're kind of like, I got, I've always done steep it. The, uh, I've always known him and I, before I started training with him. Uh, he's a nice guy. So like, but when I first got there, it was like, it was kind of weird. I was like, Oh my God, I'm training with the heavyweight champion in the world. And now like, it's no big deal. And like, we're all really good friends. He was at the wedding last night, partying and having a good time. And, uh, you know, Alexa just got into the UFC and it's great to see him progress. And then, uh, make it to the UFC, you know, last month or whatever. And, I was more nervous for his fight than I was for any of mine. So it's uh, it's like a family, man. It's it's really good. And I imagine that adds something in terms of you know you're training with the best heavyweight in the world, and I imagine that can, has to add to the confidence. Yeah, uh, I've said it before. Like if 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 I can take a punch from him, man, I don't think there's a human that can knock me out. You know, because I think I I feel like he. He hits just as hard or harder than anybody else in the world. Like, and he's durable and he's he's all around good. He he's all, he's good off his back. You just never see it because I mean, how often does he get taken down? Um, it's been like a, 
the greatest thing to have him training me and you know not only that but like mentally he is uh he talks me through a lot of stuff and uh, it's just great having him around you know it's great to be that he he allowed me to be part of his training camp when he did and it would just turn into like you know now i'm like his main training partner now you mentioned you'd always kind of known him i mean how did you get to know steepy originally and actually i was going to ask you anyways how did you get into mma from the beginning how did i get into mma from the beginning um, I started wrestling when I was like 17, I was 16 or something like that. Uh, and I ended up being pretty good at it. Like I, I, I always played basketball my whole life and then I got into that and, um, I loved competing. I loved beating people up. Like if they had to take blood time during, uh, uh, the match, a wrestling match, it was like awesome, you know? So, uh, I always liked UFC growing up. So when I watched that, I was like, I kind of put two and two together, and I was like, I think I can do that. And I took a lot of ass kick, you know, ass kickings early in my career uh, when I was 17, 18, and then uh, everything started to click. And how did you, because you said you'd known Stipe for a while. When did you first meet uh, Stipe? Oh, uh, when I was, I believe I was 18. He, maybe 19, he just, he was getting into it too. He, I think he was doing just boxing at the time. And um, they were looking for, you know, they were always looking for sparring partners. So me being a, a dumb 19-year-old kid, I went up there and was like, oh, I can, I can probably hang with him. And he beat me. I mean, I had no business being in there with him. But I also knew if I can get better than, and I can try, you know, eventually I want to be able to hang with him, then I can hang with anybody. So, I mean, he even as an amateur, he was like, one of the baddest men on the planet. So that's how I met him. We trained together when I was 19. He probably doesn't even remember that, but I, of course I do. Uh, super cool, man. Uh, and, you know, you obviously, you went through LFA. You got some experience there. Uh, you know, and that, that first fight against uh, Race Green was actually a rematch for you. Yeah. Um, you know, what did you take away from that fight? Obviously, the outcome wasn't, you know, what you wanted it to be, but what were the takeaways? Um, I would say that, um, I don't know. The, the takeaways I got from it is don't take anybody lightly. I thought I was going to go in there and the same thing was going to happen. And, I mean, I still think I won the fight, but, you know, judges saw it otherwise. Um, I, can't, I can't start off slow on this, this one coming up next Saturday. So, um I don't know. I, I, that's all I took from it, you know. Don't don't leave it to the judges. Did you have? And I think that's a common one. Obviously, don't leave it to the judges. We saw some of that even this weekend uh, at two forty two. But um, as far as the contender series goes, did you feel that prepared you well for the big show experience? No, I think it was the opposite. Uh, the contender series. Well, maybe it might be a little different now because they're in a new building. But before. There was like, you know, 50, 60 people in the crowd. It almost felt like a gym atmosphere where you're sparring. And then when you get to the, you know, the big show, you you go out there and they like, you know, they'll let you check it out real quick before the people start coming in. And then you just see all these empty seats and you're like, oh my God, you know, this is crazy. But that's the thing about this fight is, uh, the last fight was, I wasn't nervous at all. It was kind of weird. Like, I don't get super nervous, but, like, I had zero nerves at all. And I think that was part of the problem is I, I wasn't um, I wasn't ready for it. Like, I just, I was a more, I was happy I made it to the UFC instead of, like, staying focused and, and doing what I was supposed to do. Gotcha. Well, you know, coming off of that, you still picked up a big-name opponent here. I mean, he hasn't been active because of the health stuff, but... I mean, Duffy's been around. He's fought some big names. What are your thoughts on this matchup, and what was your initial reaction to hearing, you know, Todd Duffy? Uh, I remember I, I remember watching him when I was younger, and he was just a destroyer when he was, like, 25, 26. Um, but I love, I love good matchups. I love tough guys. Um, I mean, people that only look for easy fights, man, that, that annoys me. Um, so I was real happy to get it. That's a huge name. I mean, the hardcore fans still know who he is, and he's in the record books for, like, one of the fastest knockouts ever. So, you know, um, 
but it, it was a little it was actually extra motivation to get ready for this fight because i knew who he was and i was like yeah, he brings it so so do i have to bring it too absolutely does i mean are you a believer at all in ring rust given how long he's been out yeah i am uh there, you can spar every day of every week but it's not the same it's it's honestly not the same uh because I've taken like 14 months off before, and I got back in that cage, and I was like confused the first round. I was like, "Man, this is weird. You got your adrenaline. You're not used to your adrenaline spiking up like that. There's no, there's nothing in the world that gets your adrenaline up that high. Um, so he's gonna have to deal with all that. You know, maybe he's comfortable in there. I don't know. Uh, I hope he is. I, I want the best Todd Duffy that night. I want to, I want to beat the best Todd Duffy there is. Now, when you look at this matchup on paper, you go, geez, you know, this one's not going the distance. Is that kind of a fair uh, fair statement here? I, you know, I, on paper, it doesn't look like it's going to, but you never know. And we're more than prepared to go 15 minutes. Um, he might be as well. He's, I don't know if he's ever been 15 minutes. I, I haven't looked at his record or, or anything like that. I don't get, really get into all that, but... Um, I know he can push the pace for 25 minutes, so 15 minutes isn't going to be a problem. When it comes to preparing for opponents, I mean, are you a guy who game plans for a specific fighter? Do you watch a lot of tape? Do you leave it to your coaches or just kind of focus on you? Uh, more or less, we focus on me. Um, in, my, in my heart, I, I believe, but when I'm on and when I use my game plan and I, I implement it, um, I'm one of the best fighters in the world in, in the heavyweight division. So uh, they watch tape on them. I don't. Uh, I made that mistake a couple years ago watching tape on people. They look a lot better on film than they do in the cage sometimes. So um, yeah, I just let them handle it. They tell me what to watch for, and then we they just pound it into my brain until you know I'm sick of hearing them talk about it. <laughs> but they're the best coaches in the world for a reason. Absolutely. Now. This is a pretty pretty big card uh, in Vancouver, and you've got Gagey Cerrone at the top of it, um, which has got to be one of the best matchups uh, of the year, especially for lightweight. Do you got yeah. a pick in that fight? Are you a fan of either guy? Oh, well, I'm on a fanboy out here. I, I mean, Cowboy's still my like favorite fighter as a fan, <laughs> so I'm happy I'm going to get to be on the same card as him. Um, I promised myself I wouldn't get like uh, too fanboy or like go up and try to take a picture with him because I mean I'm here for business. He's here for business, but uh, uh, man, that's gonna be a great fight, and everybody's already calling it fight of the night already. But I'm gonna I'm gonna laugh if it's not if it's like a more technical slow paced fight. You know, every it, you know it'd just be funny if everybody's because everybody expects it to be crazy, which it's gonna be crazy, but. Uh, you know, both those guys are pretty technical fighters, so who knows what's going to happen. All right, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one, too. I'm looking forward to yours. I always ask this, and, and you can skip out on this if you don't want to do it, but do you have a prediction for your fight? Uh, no prediction. I just know I'm going to win. Uh, I train too too hard. I have too many good coaches and too many good people around me. Um, we're going to go out there, and we're going to go to war, and that's all that matters is going out there and getting our hand raised. Absolutely. If you do get your hand raised, all goes well. What's the uh, plan for the rest of 2019? Would you like to get one more in if you can? Yeah, for sure. Any uh, yeah. card on the horizon that you'd want to be on? Uh, I fight every weekend if they let me, so it doesn't matter. Fair enough. One more for you. We saw, and I'm asking this because, like you said, you've been training with Stipe. You've known him for a while, and then you've got another promotion with Bellator. Ryan Bader, Czech Congo, went last night. Ryan Bader's been saying, hey, I'm the best heavyweight in the world. What are, what are your thoughts uh, when he says stuff like that? I'm sure he's a nice guy, but he's not. I mean, we all know who the greatest of all time is. Um, there's a reason that belt's in Cleveland right now. Um, you know, he can believe whatever he wants, and he's, he's, a, he's a nice guy. I've, I've met him at our gym before, but, I mean, we all know who the best is. So <laughs> there's really no debate. And it's kind of a shame. I mean, he's done good things over there, but you know, after he left the UFC, I mean, we're never going to get to get to see maybe him go up. Um, but yeah, so back to uh, Vancouver. Uh, looking forward to this fight, and uh, you know, 
hope to see you backstage. I see you got the catch you on the media day. Have you gotten kind of more used to kind of the media attention going into these now? Yeah, it doesn't. It, it's it's just normal now. You know, the first couple of fights that happened, I was kind of like, oh my god, look at all this. But now it's just, it's it's fine. You know, I enjoy doing it. Well, I hope to see you there, uh, and we'll talk to you on the media day again. Hey, thanks a lot for taking the time as well. We'll uh, send this out to you. Where can fans find you on social media? Uh, all my social media is Jeff Hughes MMA. Pretty easy stuff. Um, that's it. You know, I'm, I, I try to stay busy on Instagram and, and Facebook. I, I, I'm 31 years old. I have no idea how to use Twitter. Uh, so uh, I'm going to work on that after this fight, though. So you can catch me on all those. 31 years old is a dagger to my heart. I just turned 40. <laughs> I, I'm not much further behind. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Hey, thanks again for the time today. We'll talk to you soon, man. All right, sounds good. Thanks. Cheers.